Friday night, Pastor was mentioning how great God is and how he's the creator of all the flowers in the world. And as you look at all the variations of the flowers, and that's the beauty of, of the God that we serve, that he can create beautiful mountaintops, beautiful, uh, n you know, n nature scenes. And yet when he created you and he created me, the Bible says that he created us in his image. And um, today, let's just fall in love with God. He made you, and he has a purpose for you. And sometimes we live life, you know, we live life, and we, we live every day, and we still feel like, what's my purpose, God? God is, you're here at the right time and the right place because God wants to speak to us today, and he wants to remind you what your purpose is. So, you know, as we begin to worship God and just to, uh, Thank him. That's part of your purpose is worshiping him. That's what we were made for. We were made for him. And um, when we're outside or away from him, that's when we're lost. But when we're in him and ab abiding in him, he abides in us. And that's what it's all about. So just lift up your hands and just let your thanksgiving flow out of your mouth this morning. Oh, we love you, my God. We love you, Lord. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Mm. Yes, Lord. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus. 
Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
up our hands to you, Lord. We surrender to your kingship, oh God. Have your way today, Lord. Have your way, oh God. We surrender. We say yes to you today. Yes to you, Lord. Yes, my God. Yes, Lord. We say yes to you. We say yes, my God. Whatever your plan is for our lives, we surrender, my God. We give you our all. We give you our heart. We give you our mind. We give you our life, oh God. Every part of us, my God, belongs to you, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Worthy, worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. continue to worship him hallelujah thank you lord god almighty we love you we praise you god for your love and your grace thank you my god we want to press in this morning my god we don't want to hold anything back from expressing how much we love you and how grateful we are god hallelujah Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's pour out our praise here this morning. Amen. Lord, we can't praise you enough, mighty God. Oh, we honor you, my God, with our voices this morning, my God. We declare, my God, your praises here this morning, Lord. We declare your glory here this morning, mighty God. We exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to our King, to our Redeemer, the great I Am. Hallelujah. Oh, we can't praise you enough, Lord. You are so worthy so worthy, my God, of all the praises and all the glory and all the honor, Lord. Oh, we are grateful this morning, my God. Oh, we serve a mighty God, an awesome God. Oh, we love you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. And we welcome your presence in this place, Lord. Thank you, my God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, my God, for your keeping power, my God. Thank you for your amazing grace, my God. All oh, your mercies, my God. New every morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. 
mighty God, awesome God, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for calling us out of darkness, my God, and into your marvelous light. We are grateful this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to pray uh, this morning for the needs. I was going to share a scripture, uh, Ephesians 3.20, amen. He's able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, amen, this morning, amen. So those stumbling blocks, amen, those needs, he could turn them into stepping stones, amen, this morning, amen. He's here, amen. He loves you, amen. And we're going to pray. Father, thank you, my God, once again, Lord, for the privilege, my God, oh, to be called your people, my God, to be in your presence this morning, my God. We just love you, my God. But always, my God, as we go through this world, my God, we need you, my God. We need your power, my God. We need your wisdom, my God. We need your strength this morning, my God. Oh, we need your word, my God, this morning, my God. Oh, that you would just pour out your spirit here, my God upon your people, my God. We hunger for it, my God. We need it, my God. We thirst for it this morning, my God. We need your power, your spirit, my God. Oh, to be poured out upon us here this morning, my God. Oh, there's many needs here, my God. Oh, but you are the Lord, our provider this morning, my God. Begin meeting the needs, my God. Lifting the burdens, my God. Healing the sick, my God. Strengthening the weak this morning, my God. Oh, inspiring, my God. Those that are discouraged this morning, my God. Minister this morning to your people people, my God. Oh, we call upon you, my God. Oh, we want to lift up, my God, our brother Freddie this morning, Lord. Oh, that your mercies and your grace be upon him, my God. Your healing power, my God. Speak to him. Strengthen him, my God. Oh, fulfill, my God, the plan and the purpose, my God, that you have for his life, Lord. Continue praying for Susie, Lord, for healing, my God, that you'll see her through, my God, that you'll restore her health, my God. Shay's dad, my God. Eleanor, Lord, we continue praying for Eleanor for healing power, my God. To touch her, my God. Rebuke that cancer this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus, my God. Oh, we continue praying for Maria, my God. Oh, for Doug, my God. For his test results, my God. That your mercies and your grace, my God. Be upon him, my God, as he goes, my God. For his test results, my God. Oh, we lift up Charlene Smith, Lord. And we pray for a cure, my God. Healing, my God. A cure, my God. A solution, my God. Oh, enlighten the minds of these doctors, my God. Oh, that they will see, my God. A cure, my God. Oh, we continue praying for Ron, my God. Our brother Gilly, my God. Brother Frank, Sister Edna, my God. Our sister Tricia, my God. We pray your healing touch upon her, my God. And her sister Margaret, my God, this morning, Lord. Also, we want to pray for traveling mercies, my God. For her son, my God. And all of us here, my God. As we make our way, my God. Be with us, my God. Guide us, protect us, my God. Also, my God, families, Lord. Avivica and her family, my God. Reuben, my God, and his family, Lord. We pray salvation will come to that family, my God. God. Sister Esther, my God, and her family, Lord, her son Gabriel, Lord, we continue praying, my God, for you to have your way within his life, Lord. Sister Eileen's family, my God, Brother Gary's family, Lord, uh, uh, Vivian Vasquez, Lord, we lift her to you this morning, Lord, we continue praying, my God, that you will bring her home, Father God. Also, my God, we want to pray for the grieving families this morning, Lord, continue praying for your peace and your comfort. And your strength, my God, to the, see them through, Lord, the, the Norris family, Lord. Uh, that, that guy, Jerry, my God, that lost his sister, my God. Uh, and our sister, Christina, my God. And, and Irene, my God. And so many others, my God. We just pray for peace, my God. Comfort over them, my God. Uh, have your, your mercy and your grace upon them, Father God. And any other need that's here, Father, you see the heart. You see the need. My God, meet that need in the name of Jesus, Father God. We pray and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise this morning. Amen. He who deserves praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we know you hear us, my God. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, we welcome you this morning, amen, into the house of the Lord. Amen. We're going to go ahead and greet each other, amen, and sing a song, amen. Thank you. 
Victory Outreach, you can go ahead and take a seat, and if you need a tithing envelope, one of our lovely, lovely usherettes will be with you shortly. If you want to continue tithing online, you can do so by pointing your camera to the QR code on the screen. We really cannot do it without you, so thank you to everyone who tithes week in and week out. You make our ministry happen. Also, we want to help out the global effort, so you can be part of giving to the United We Can ministry, and if you want to get involved in that, you can reach out to Sister Linda, who is our United We Can ambassador. We have a couple of different opportunities for you to get involved with our church, uh, starting with our Bible study that takes place every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Uh, if you haven't joined in already, please take a picture of the meeting ID and password and uh, hear what's in store for, in the Bible for you today. Also, we have our Wednesday night prayer nights that take place every Wednesday over Zoom at 7.30 p.m. Take a picture of that meeting ID and password and send it to a friend because they need prayer in their lives. We also have our Loving Others Food Ministry that takes place every first and third Saturday of the month. Yesterday, we came out here and gave back to the rest of the community, and it is such a blessing that we're doing that. Church doesn't just take place on Friday or Sunday. It's every day and after in between. So if you want to help out Sister Debbie, please be here. They're here from 8 to 10 a.m. And look forward to the next meeting. We also have our food outreach that takes place every second Saturday. And it is always a blast to hear uh, the testimonies 
um, from the people that work this event. And we are doing more than just giving a plate of food. We are reaching, restoring, and redirecting their lives. Imagine if everyone just kept Jesus to themselves. There wouldn't be anyone here filling these seats. But please help us in the outreach. Uh, you can see Sister Diana or Brother John for more info on that. Next up, we also have our city evangelism, which takes place first and last Saturdays at 3 p.m., where you can meet here with Pastor Jerry and then hit the streets to do the same again. Also, we don't have it here, but we are planning a pancake breakfast for the worship team. So if you love your worship team, If you love your worship team, please show your support. We'll have the slide up next week, but it's going to be June 29th from 10 to 12 p.m. So come with an appetite and come with friends and just uh, be blessed by the event. We also have a men's discipleship that is taking place next week. So for the men, if you haven't registered already, you can by visiting the <clears throat> Victory Outreach website and register there. Also, May 19th, we have Diverse Sunday. How many of you guys remember Diverse Sunday? I was looking at pictures and I'm like, wow, everyone had a lot more hair back then. No, but uh, we are going to be doing it again and that's going to be taking place on May 19th. So if you want to show out for your country, whatever it may be. So I'm expecting some pupusas, um, some tamales, paella, whatever it is, uh, you can sign up with Sister Debbie and have a booth to run for that day. We're also having a special speaker and that's going to be Pastor Jeffrey Kalu all the way from Indonesia. So don't miss it. And... Uh, Keep it in prayer. Thank you. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to tithes and offerings. Thank you. Did she say everybody had a lot more hair back then? You trying to say, sister? <laughs> oh, okay. I see some of you back there busting up. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a big clap offering this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many are thankful to be in the house of God this morning? Amen. How many are having a good time so far this morning? Amen. You know, this is a very special time this morning because not only are, uh, are you here and you help make it a special time, but the presence of God is here in our midst. Come on, let's give the Lord a big clap offering this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a special time. A special assembly. In the power of his presence this morning, we're going to go ahead and pray for this morning's tithes and offerings. Amen. If you're tuning in uh, there on the YouTube channel, we want to welcome you as well. That are there wherever you may be right now. Or if you're going to catch this message later, God has a plan for each and every one of us that are attentive this morning, that are tuning on in, whether you're here within the four walls of the building or you're there on the YouTube channel. God's got a special plan. How many can say amen? And that plan is divine this morning. And it's not by mishap by coincidence that we are listening to we're about to listen to the word of god that we've been able to praise him and worship him is part of his divine plan for our lives this morning how many you believe that with me amen and guess what it's part of his plan as well for the people within the body of christ not just not here at victory outreach inglewood but throughout the body of christ to build the work of the kingdom how many can say amen to that amen it's always been part of his divine plan Amen. And you know what he says in Malachi chapter 3, to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. And then he uses food as, a, as a, an illustration or as an, as an, an analogy. He says, so that there may be food in my house. Amen. Now when you think about food, it's an element that sustains you. It keeps you. Amen. Right? It sustains. And so this idea of being able to be sustained, amen, is through the life-giving aspect of the people of God here within the church financially. How many can say amen to that? Amen. That's part of his plan is always to be raise up a generation of people right here at Victor Abbey Jinglewood. Amen. And ultimately throughout the body of Christ, a people that believe in giving of their offerings, of their tithes this morning, so that this precious work here on earth can continue just like it has been for many years now. How many believe me with that this morning? Amen. How many can say amen to that? So we're going to go ahead and pray this morning for our tithes and offerings. And then guess what? He says right there in the second part of that verse, he says, test me on this. And that's the only part where he says to test him on this. He says, 
Test me on this, in this, and see if I will not open up a floodgate in heaven and pour out such a blessing on you that you will not have room enough to contain it. Amen? And how many know God knows how to bless us in so many different aspects of our lives, not just financially, but in so many different ways. So let's, let's do that this morning as we take our offering in hand, our tithes in hand. And we want to pray for you, maybe that perhaps that can't give this morning for whatever reason. We want to lift you up as well. Father, we thank you this morning, God, that you have been raising up this work for centuries now, my God. Father God, every sense, God, that, God, the book of Acts, this work of the kingdom has been advancing forcefully. And God, so that the gates of hell should not prevail against it. And we thank you this morning, God, that, God, we are able to participate in such a, what seems like a small manner, but in a great way, God, when all is said and done. Here at Victory Outreach Inglewood, we thank you that we can be contributing factors, God, by way of tithes, by way of offerings. And, God, that you have a way of sustaining the work in your house. God, from the inside of these four walls on out. God, continue to flourish our ministry here at Victory Outreach Inglewood because of the faithful generation of givers that you've raised up for many years now, my God. Bless these tithes and offerings and use them, my God, to do exactly what you intend to do. We love you this morning. We praise you. And in Jesus' name we all say amen. God bless you this morning as you give. You can go ahead and bring your tithes or offerings up front. Good to be here this morning on a beautiful Sunday morning. And before I get into God's word, we want to pay tribute to someone who is very special to our congregation, uh, who made a huge difference. And I just want you to know who that is. Now, this isn't a memorial service, but, uh, but a tribute. Like Linda informed me yesterday, a doxology. We want to pay tribute to someone very special. 18 years ago, we experienced a tragedy in our church, a sudden violent loss of someone who was very special, one of our members, and not just a member, but a pastor, an amazing man, an amazing friend, a leader. We used to call him, for short, TCB, taking care of business. <laughs> he was always taking care of business, faithful, uh, perhaps the most faithful person uh, I, I know. And on April 18th, a week ago today, a, a, a week ago in two thousand, uh, back in 2006, 18 years ago actually, Pastor Augustine Mian was shot to death on a Friday evening, and it was Good Friday. And when I heard the news that Pastor Augie was shot, I wanted to rebuke him. I was like, what are you doing getting shot? It's Good Friday, we got Easter coming up, and you know, I could not imagine that it would injure him. You know, knowing the man he was, I thought, he got shot. What is he doing? How do you get in the way of a bullet? Man, he needs to get over here because we've got things to do at church. And as time went on, I began to realize that it must have been very serious. And after picking up Sister Patty, we went to the hospital together to discover that he had passed away. And then that evening, after getting home, I remember getting home late that evening 
And uh, I, I recall Brother Andre was there at the house. I can't remember who else. I'm not sure if who else was there. But I, I do remember seeing Andre was there in the, in the living room. And I, I walked in. And for the first time that evening, I just broke down. And I cried like I never cried before. Loretta, you were there. <laughs> Amen. I think, I think Pat was there, too. I'm not sure. But, but I broke down and I cried uh, like a little baby. And so before I share a few words from the scriptures today, I, I, want, I, want to, I just want to remember him. And I want to remember him in, in the words of a couple of people. And uh, so I'm going to ask uh, Sister Patty, why don't you come? And she's, she's got something she'd like to share. Brother Caesar also, uh, why don't you make your way forward? Why don't you go first and then... Sister Patty. Um, it was a big uh, part of my life because uh, I was kind of new in church back then and, you know, one foot in, one foot out the church. And, but that vulnerable season as a Christian, you know, and he, uh, God put him in my life during that time, you know, to uh, help me, you know, get me through. He was, uh, and just, I don't know, he did everything right, it seems like. I know uh, my son, little Caesar, threw him a vegetarian birthday party at Bible study. My son Joshua made him a big old cake with his picture on it. Back then, that was like a new, a new thing you never seen, you know. And he, uh, he rebuke you if you need to rebuke him, <laughs> amen. Encourage you. I remember he used to deliver uh, bread, and one time early in the morning, he, he knocking on my door and he'd give me some fresh, still warm, baked fresh from the oven before the stores got it, before the restaurants got it. Just, he would always want to be a blessing. Always want to remember your. Your birthday, he always wanted to, he loved pastor, man. He would always, like, before pastor would come up to preach, like, during service, he would stop him. Oh, we have, you know, Christmas time, a gift, and roll it in. And mm -hmm. uh, he would always, it's like he, he did everything right, it seemed like, you know. And I, I, I don't know, a lot of memories, you know, a big part of my life. And I think, you know, I'm here because of God using him in my life. And yeah. just, I don't know, a few things, just one thing I remember, I don't know when, when he, I don't know if you want exactly the details, but I think he wanted to be buried in Woodlawn over there. And, I remember, uh, I think Sister Margaret had like a dream and God, because there was no more room there, you know. And I think uh, God told her he was going to move a tree and there was like a storm that came and the tree fell and, and it made a space for him there. Like oh, a lot of stuff, man. A lot of stuff happened there, man. And yeah. I should have wrote more stuff, but yeah, a big part of my life, man. And I miss him, you know. One time I, I had a dream um, many years ago and it was, he was welcoming me like into a big old church. You know, I don't know if it was heaven or something, but, but he was, like, smiling, and he was welcoming me. Come on, like, like, almost like an usher, like, taking me to my seat, you know. I had that dream, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, something like that. But, yeah, man, big, big part of my life, and I just I wish I could say more, you know. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Caesar. I know his best friends in this church first was Pastor Kevin. And uh, Brother Jerry and Caesar, they were like his heart. You all, I mean, other than me and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've always told him when I met him, he was a Bible study leader. He graduated the men's home. And later on, um, I met him in Bible study. And it was all singles. We had, uh, man, mm. 35 strong. We had a lot of single people. And we were, he was teaching in Mar Vista. And we'd been there for years and years. We had Mark was there, you know, I think I'm not sure whether Caesar was there, but I remember later on in the years we met Caesar. I met Caesar's was gonna be his wife, Sister Pat, and we were all working at UCLA at the time. But it was it was it was a journey. But uh Augie loved the Lord. And this book right here was a major part of his life. Okay. He loved the Lord and I like what Pastor teaches us. He says, ministry flows out of you from what you know about the word. He was walking the word, even at home. Mm. I mean, I, Pastor knows this about my personality. I sometimes can be an antagonist because I want to get the truth to the matter, you know? But he, I couldn't antagonize this man. He, who, you saw him here in the church with the smile, loving God, loving Jesus. I didn't, there were just those times, you know, we do it as wives sometimes, we're like, ah, oh, you know, it's not that he gets on my nerve, just life. There's no shaking him. He would stop and say, sister, we're on the same team. You know, 
go and pray. No, <laughs> no he never be- rebuked me. He never did. He just loved me for who I was through my faults and everything. But Pastor Augie was an original, seriously. Who you see him, if he was here today, I will tell you, he looked up to Pastor Mitchell, who was here. And this is a perfect time because I know it's kind of like a throwback month, I suppose. But he was there with Pastor Mark. You know, uh, not, I'm not sure when he came to the outreach. He was in the outreach before I got here. Hence, you know, he graduated the men's home, started a Bible study every Tuesday night for 15 years that I've known him. He was teaching Bible studies, Friday night service, you know. Mm. And uh, we both went to Veti. We both went mm, to, uh, right. first we went to Vosum. Because Victor Outreach, it was awesome because he and I were walking the same journey. There's this movie called Going My Way, and I found out that we we're both going the same way because we we're both in love with the Lord. Mm. We both love the Word. There was no shaking us. And we kind of came together in Bible study, you know, and uh, we've learned a lot, you know, and it was God. He was here, I was there, and God was just working through us. And uh, before I believe, yeah. We got married in uh, 93. Eventually, he was first. I can say real quick, he was my brother in Christ, and I respect him highly as I do my pastor and all the brothers here. But then later on, he was a friend to everybody, and I saw that. Everybody who knew him, he, you could call him friend as well. Mm-hmm. He always tried to bring the best in you, mm-hmm. and yes, there were the little things. He knew how to rebuke people, but in a loving way, you know? Amen. And I miss that. I miss that because today... I need that sometimes just to put me back on the right track. But he was also um, a father to my kids after we got married. He became my husband. And when he proposed to me, he, he asked me, and I looked, and I go, but you're my friend. How does anybody marry your friend? And I had to say yes because I felt like if I said no, I would lose a good friend. Mm-hmm. And when, when I married him, it was like the best decision other than giving mm-hmm. my life to God, Amen. you know because he would get me on the straight and narrow with the word of God and reminded me, you know, mm. he didn't have to preach to me. He just loved on me the way Jesus loved on me. Amen. And he was an original. So I will say too, in honor of the things he's done, he was, I mentioned he's a men's home director. We moved in the men's home, 820 South Flower Street. A lot of amazing things happened. A lot of miracles happened there. Right before my very eyes, it was just beautiful time in the Lord. And, um, also, one thing, Pastor Kevin was always first and above person. I know he was a servant of the Lord. And Pastor and Sister Debbie, he already knew what kind of Starbucks coffee she needed. Pastor Jerry would be the guy he would pick up sometimes and spend a lot of time with him. Mm-hmm. You know, um, just, just a lot of things happen in his short life. And I had sh- short 12 years, 12 short years of being married to him, and it just mm-hmm. went too fast. And... Uh, yeah, and, and I will tell you, though, um, God is faithful in a loving kind of way. Um, in April, Good Friday, the situation, I can just go down and tell you, right here on Manchester and La Brea, he had to meet with his brother. And uh, his brother kept calling him and his family, everybody. We were, we were hanging out that Friday night, Friday afternoon. His brother kept calling him and saying, you know, you got to come see me. And we're like, oh, no, Carlos, just come. Hang out with us, we're all going to lunch, but Carlos insisted, no, I want him, just he and I alone, yada, yada. We're like, no, and I told Augie, hey, you know, just tell him to come hang out. You know, you guys can get your own table. We were supposed to go to this cafe somewhere down on Manchester. It's gone now. I think it's Cafe Cocoon. But anyway, he decided, no, I just want to go ahead and take my brother, you know, see what he wants and whatnot. And uh, so... I dropped him off at that 7-Eleven, and that was the last time I seen him alive because it turned out that Carlos, his own brother, uh, turned the gun on him in front of that store. And uh, yeah, it just all went bad. And it, the nightmare began in my life. But uh, I was glad for the prayers that everybody had. But uh, Carlos himself, don't know what got into him, maybe drugs, who knows? I didn't understand it. But uh, I didn't know at the time on Friday afternoon I was waiting. After I dropped him off, I insinuated he was going to be home, and he never made it home. But God, again, this is where God came in before the pain began. God just told me, um, I got up out of my chair because I thought, you know, Carlos was dropping him off. And I opened up my front door, and it was, my driver was empty. There was nobody there. And as I closed the door, 
I heard three words. The Lord gave me three words, Cain and Abel. And then if you know that story of Cain and Abel, I knew exactly what it meant, but I didn't know this had happened at all yet. But God was faithful to prepare me, and he gave me those words. I couldn't. I couldn't take those words, and I just, Lord, just take those words back, mm. please. And this is like when Jeremiah, one of the prophets said, it's like a stirring, you mm. know what I mean, in your stomach, like mm. it just twisted. I said, God, no. And I kept, in my spirit, I was just throwing my hands back and said, I don't want this. I don't want this word from you, Lord. But, uh, yeah, I came back strong. And when the word of God found it was in my stomach, it just churned. And I just wanted to fold and just scream. Now, mm -hmm. mind you, the detectives hadn't even come yet. So it was a, a word that the Lord gave me before. That's how smart the Lord is in preparing me. But um, anyway, I almost bolted to my knees. But my granddaughter, Amber, who's now 22, she was only two years old. And she was standing at the door, and she looked at me. And I had to contain it because I didn't want to freak her out. I said, no, this is going to be all bad if I scream. So I, many years, I keep it to myself because I don't want to scream because it hurts. 18 years later, it still hurts. But God is good, and he's my anchor, and he's always going to be our brother. He's always going to be the man who even told with this church. He was like, he's always told the congregation when we were over on Hawthorne in every tent, he would tell us, right, Pastor, hey, you know, we can buy a church. We can buy a church. He had that kind of faith. He had that Moses kind of faith. He had that Martin Luther kind of faith. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. He used to tell us, yeah, we're, half of us were broke. You know what I mean? But the Lord kept blessing us because of his faithfulness, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of leaders. Jacob, you know, his wife, Loretta, Andre. Yeah, everybody can name Linda. Well, we were just being blessed. Mm -hmm. Pastor, we were all. But he challenged us to put some money aside. You know, hey, we're going to get a building fund, a building fund. And every Sunday he would say it, you know. He goes straight out. He would never fail from saying, we can build it. He goes, we can get our own church. Why should we have to rent? You know, we don't have to rent. We be, we're people of God, and God's provided. So he kept going on and on, and he encouraged. And I remember him saying this, don't you see it? I see it. And we'd be like, yeah, no, and then we walk out with empty pockets, but God provided, and we are here because of this building, because of his faith. He challenged us, and it's because of all of our giving and Pastor and Sister Debbie's faithfulness, you know, and that's something that is memorialized me. This is home for me. This is home for a lot of us. I know sometimes we kind of go away, but I praise God because Pastor Kevin has been such a blessing in my life since, you know, I never knew that I always thought when you're by yourself in pain, you forget that you too were suffering. I even forget my children were suffering. They miss him so much today. They really do, you know? But um, the good thing is God is good. I'm going to just talk about how the faithfulness of God, and Pastor probably will pick up on that, is it he'll speak to us sometimes when we want, don't want to hear the words he has to say, but we got to take it because he never said life would be easy. And there was one thing he's always said was, we are never promised tomorrow. And that was one thing he would always close his Bible study. We're not promised tomorrow. And now I understand on this side of his message, you know, we're not promised tomorrow. But um, to God be the glory, and I, I, when I come here, this is home for me. It's kind of weird that I come, but in a good way, he's never stepped foot in here. When he told me, you know, the service opened up this building a year after he passed, May of 2007, I believe, is when Pastor was given the keys to this church, a year after he passed. So he was here before, and he went home excited. He was like, oh, there's a place for the worship team, because we used to pass this all the time. Mind you, the men's home was down the street at 20. So it was a four-square church. So we used to pass it by. Didn't even It looked like a small building from the outside. But when he got inside, the realtors, I don't know if Sister Linda was here that day, but when Augie came in, he was looking at, he was the only one who got to see it, maybe a few others here. But when he came back home that day, he's like, wow, that's gonna be our church. God, show me, that's the one. And he goes, there's the office, we're pastor. He was thinking about all of you. He wasn't even thinking about himself. He says, a church for pastor, there's a church for, then there's a place, not a church, an office, excuse me. And he goes, an office for the worship team. And, he's, and he mentioned the baptism. And I'm like, what? You know. 
and the levels, he kept going on and on, just saying, and this and that, and I'm like, do you see it? He goes, don't you see it? And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, no, you lost me. Like, you lost me when you were talking about the children's ministry. So he was so super excited, and I believe he was here. He would be so happy and still praising God, and I know he is. His favorite thing was to say, and uh, Linda knows this, just worship Jesus. Just worship him. That's all he wanted us to just keep worshiping Jesus. And even through his his passing, I could just hear his voice. He didn't want me to cry. He's just like, why are you crying? I could just hear him. Why are you crying? And he's like, just worship Jesus, you know? So, yeah, I will worship, but I'll cry at the same time because, one, I'm grateful for who God is, and, two, that I'm grateful that I had those beautiful years with Pastor Augie. And, and my heart goes out to you because when I sing this in a kind way, I wish you would all... Anybody who's new here would have had a chance to meet him. He's an amazing man. He would have loved on you, and you would have seen that. It just oozed out of him. Ministry was people, and, and it reminded me of the Lord because Jesus always went after the lost, and that's what he did. He loved evangelism, everything, everything. Directing the home was an honor for him, but I'm going to give this over to Pastor Kevin. I'm sorry if I took a lot of time, but I love you all. God bless. Love you. Love you. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise. Thank you, Sister Patty. Very well said. And everything she said is absolutely true. He was so instrumental in us getting this building, and he never had the opportunity to worship in it. He, he, he saw it and came and, and, and saw the building, but never had the opportunity to worship here with us in this building. And, and we don't have the time to hear from others. There were others who wanted to share, uh, but I, I really wanted to hear from Patty and, and, and let, allow Patty to just kind of share her heart and tell the story. So thank you so much, Sister Patty, for sharing so beautifully and articulately that what you uh, had on your heart concerning Augie. Wonderful man. Well, I'm gonna read uh, he's still speaking, and he's going to be speaking this morning. Hebrews chapter 12. I'll begin in verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter, the author and finisher, right, of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Father God, we thank you so much for a time that we can honor those that are deserving of honor. But we need to hear from you as well, Lord, that you would speak to us, speak from heaven to our hearts this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. And God's people say, amen. Now this verse describes a strategy. It describes a strategy for how to win the race. And just in case you didn't know it, you are in a race this morning. You are in a race to heaven, a race that has been marked out for you. And in this race, you are surrounded by what the Bible describes as a cloud of witnesses, right? A cloud of witnesses, like an arena full of people that are shouting and cheering you on to win the race. Chapter 11 tells us that there are people like Abel and Noah and Abraham and Moses. It describes these individuals in chapter 11. Rahab and David, they weren't all perfect people. They weren't all perfect people, but they're hall of famers. They made it to the hall of faith, right? This list of people who have made it People who weren't necessarily perfect, had issues in their lives, had things that people could have pointed to them and said about them, but because of their faith, they made it to heaven. They are the ones who are surrounding us today, right? Those who have run this race before us, great people like this, people you may know who have run the race before you, have passed on and are now in heaven, are cheering you on to run the race, those who have gone before us, family members. Pastor Augie is there. I can see him right now. He probably has a, a Kevin hat on. You know, like when you go to see your favorite team, you'll have the hat, the T-shirt, a Kevin T-shirt. 
He's probably sitting in the Kevin section of heaven at Kevco Stadium in heaven somewhere, cheering me on, cheering you on, right? Where, with the banner, with your name on it, run, run. What are you slowing down for? Amen. Run Amen. this race, right. cheering us on, yes. family members, friends that have passed on, spectators in heaven watching you run this race. This is what it's describing here. Verse 1 says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And they know what you're called to do. They know the path that you're supposed to run. Verse 1 says that we're in a race that is marked out for us. Which could possibly mean that my race isn't the same as your race. The race that is marked out for me is a path that I must run based on what God has called me to do. And the path that you've been given, it's marked out for you to run. And here are these people who know the path for us and are cheering us on. And the saints in heaven become fans. They become fans and they, they, they know if you're not running. They know when you, you're slowing down. And just like any sport, man, they're there to represent you, to cheer you on. And believe it or not, you represent them. In the world today, you represent those who have gone before you that it's worthwhile to run this race with everything you've got. So just imagine that, T-shirts with your, your picture on there. You know, they're cheering us on. Run! Yes. Don't slow down. Yes. Doing the wave, right? Shouting. Yes. And in some cases, crying. Pleading for us not to give up the race. Don't slow down for anything. And even though you can't hear them from where we are here on earth, they're cheering you on, just like we do when we watch a game. I don't know if you've ever watched a game and you start talking to your favorite player who is not performing the way you know that he can or, or that she can. Run, right? Shoot the shot. Throw the ball. Catch the ball. Whatever it may be. And you're like talking to them. From, you know, grab a pillow and a headlock and start beating on it, Right? You ever do that? I look for Debbie, like, come here, you know. And, <laughs> and as the finish line gets closer, so does the enthusiasm. So does the excitement. The cheering as you're getting closer. You, you may be weary and, and the cheering and they're, they're shouting for you this tremendous cloud of witnesses. And he's a part of it. And there are others who have gone ahead of us who is a part of it, cheering you on. It's not about the strength of your legs. It's not about how fast you are. It's about never losing sight okay. of Jesus, okay. right? In the Greek games, they had a person that stood at the very end. He was the person who would signal the start of the race and the person who would determine the winner. He was also the person who would reward the winner, with the prize, and that person is Jesus. When you start the race, you fix your eyes. You don't get distracted on anything else. You fix your eyes on the one who will reward you at the end of the race. You don't look away. You don't slow down. You don't worry about how other people are running next to you and the, and the course that they're... You stay in your own lane and you run with perseverance. You run with determination. You don't slow down. You don't give up. So here's some advice for those who may not be running as hard as we could. Number one, you can look at the winners. Look at the winners. Like it says in verse one, there's a great cloud. And it gives us a description of who they were in chapter 11. It names a bunch of people. It even goes on and says, man, we don't even have time to tell you about so many others who have persevered and persevered and they didn't get up. Look at the winners. We're surrounded by a great cloud of winners. People like Jephthah, who had a, man, his life, was, he had a messed up life, but he won. Rahab, Moses, not perfect, but they ran. In the very next chapter in Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 7 and 8, it tells us to consider, you know, or it actually tells us to remember the leaders who have gone ahead of you. 
Remember your leaders who have gone ahead of you, uh, those who taught you the word of God. Right? Remember those leaders. Consider, it says, the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. It tells us that. And then it says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? It's telling us there that, man, if we remember those who have gone ahead of us, who taught the word of God to us, if we consider the outcome of their way of life, their faithfulness, and we imitate that, their faithfulness, Jesus is the same for you as he was for them. Whether it was people like Pastor Augie, or people like David, Jephthah, or Moses. He is the same today as he's always been. Remember, consider, and imitate, right? Look at the winners. They'll tell you how to run. Secondly, you can look at yourself. Look at yourself. What are you encumbered by? What hinders you? It tells us there in verse 1 also, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And there are things that gets us all tripped up, things that slow us down. Can you imagine running a race and you're trying to carry all kinds of baggage that you don't need? But put that stuff down. Throw it off, it says, and run the race. Some of us are carrying you know, our, our cell phones, making sure, checking our message, trying to run, you know, checking messages, right? Trying to pull our car with us. Whatever it is you're carrying, you know, some sisters with the, you know, makeup, trying to put their eyelashes on, right? Running the race. Put that down and run the race, right? Win the race. Look at yourself and throw off anything that hinders you. Be agile. Be nimble, quick. Don't be encumbered by stuff. Do whatever you can to run unhindered. Thirdly, you can look at the course. The Bible says, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And there's two things here. Perseverance, that means not giving up. Running the distance. Running the whole way. Don't stop short. But it also tells us here that there's a race that's marked out for us. There's a lane that you run in. That you don't step over the lane. I remember back, back in the day, there was a woman by... Uh, her last name was Ruiz, I remember. She ran in the Boston Marathon. And you may have heard the story where uh, she uh, entered the race, got the, the number and everything, started the race, uh, started running, and then she ran off to the side, got in her car, drove all the way to the end, half a mile from the end of the... And then she just jumped through the crowd. It's like, ah, ah, and, and ran, you know, to the finish line. And they like, wow. You broke a world record. You know, there's nobody who's run this marathon. No woman has run as fast as you. you know, how, how did you work? And they were asking her questions. You know, did you, how, how was your intervals? And she said, what is that? Right? You, you, can, you can watch the video. They have a video. What is that? I don't know what that is. Can you explain? And, and, and she, you know, was there at the finish line. And for eight days, they believed that she won the race until they found out that she did not run the race that was marked out for her. She did not run the race that was marked out for her. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. No shortcuts, no cutting corners. Stay the course. Stay the course. You have a cloud of witnesses cheering you on, watching you. Uh, cheering, and, and like I said, just if you can imagine watching, I, I, I watched a game the other day, a, a, a team that I, I wanted to win, and I could say, hey, you're slowing down, man. You're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not doing what you were doing at first, and I'm talking to them. They can't hear me, but I'm talking to them. There may be someone talking to you. You can't hear them. They're looking at you, cheering you on. Run, run, persevere. Stay the course. Fourthly and lastly, look to Jesus. In fact, it says, fix your eyes on Jesus. The New International Version says, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. It says in the King James, the author and perfecter of our faith. Never lose sight of Jesus. He stands at the end, ready to reward you. Don't be hindered or distracted by the things of this life. 
Don't be hindered or distracted by people around you. Don't look around, you know, don't be distracted. We run with our eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen? Will you run in such a way to win? That's a question. Will you run in such a way as to win? Amen. Amen. If so, why don't you stand with me this morning? I'd like to pray for us. I'd like to pray for us. I, you know, I don't mind being your cheerleader also, you know. On this side, you know, uh, there's a stadium up in heaven, up in the clouds. There are people cheering us on. The winners who have won. There's Jesus standing at the very end, holding your prize, cheering us on. Heavenly Father, this morning, it's my prayer that we be encouraged to run this race. There's something so valuable at the end of this race, life eternal, joy, every hardship disappears. And though we may have to persevere hardship right now as we run this race, the reward is worth it. I pray, Father, this morning for those who who have been weakened a little through circumstances that may slow us down, family situations, the burden of relationships and marriage and finances, the burdens of physical illness and all the kinds of things that slow people down in this race that we're in. I pray, Father, for your people that we can throw off the things that hinder us that we can look at those who have won before us, that we can look at ourselves and see what entangles us, that we can look at the course that has been marked out for us, and after looking at these things, fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. You stand ahead of us, calling us. You stand ahead of us, cheering us on. And I pray for us, Father God, help us. Help us, my God, to win this race. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. With every head still bowed and every eye closed, I'd like to pray this morning a prayer of repentance to ask God for forgiveness because there may be some here this morning who may just be entering the race You say to yourself, you know, I I want to be forgiven of my past. I want to live in heaven for eternity. I I want to make it. I I want my life to matter. I I want to move forward. I want to escape the person I used to be. God can restore my life. I believe that. I believe that he died, Jesus died for me. And I believe that he resurrected for me. And I want to accept him as Lord and Savior of my life. If that's you and you say, you know what, I want to say that prayer this morning. Right where you are, by the raising of your hand, I'd like to pray for you. Amen. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. All right. Amen. Any others here this morning? You can put your hands down. Thank you, Jesus. I like to pray, and let's all, perhaps we can all just join in this prayer with our brothers and sisters who raise their hands. Simply say this, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my past. Enter into my life and transform me. Be the Lord of my life. Yes, I believe that Jesus is Lord, that he died and resurrected. Resurrect me also, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Father God, I pray for those who have said this prayer this morning, that right now, 
you would lift every burden from their life, that you would make the world brand new for them, Father. I pray that you would transform, that you would renew them. Father God, strengthen them to run this race marked out for them with perseverance and joy. We thank you this morning in Jesus' name. And God's people say, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, perhaps God has spoken to you, and only you know where you are in this race. Right? Only you know where you are. There are times that there are proud athletes, proud athletes that believe, oh, I got this thing. I got this thing. Proud athletes who stumble in the last leg of their journey because of pride. Pride that says, you know, I got this, I got it all figured out, I know what I'm doing. I can make the shot, you know, I can catch the pass. Pride, pride comes before a fall. There are those who say, you know what, uh, I'll just run at my own pace. I, I you know, I, I can make it. There's all kinds of things that happen in the minds of people that keep them from winning the race. This morning, let's win the race. If God has spoken to you and you say, God, I simply need your help, give me the stamina, give me the faith, give me the perseverance to win the race. Why don't you come? Let's find a place of prayer. Let's talk to Jesus this morning. Let's have perseverance for this race that we're in, perseverance for your Christian walk, perseverance for your marriage as a parent. Oh, perseverance in every aspect of your life, what God has called you to do. Perseverance to win, to make it the entire way. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we ask, my God, for your strength. We ask for your blessing. We ask, my God, for your covering, Lord. We ask, my God, oh God, for, my God, that determination in our hearts to give us, my God, the stamina, the, the strength to go forward in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Show us your glory. 
change everything Life's healed Hope found Here now Jesus, you change everything for that message and thank you sister patty for those kind words i never had the opportunity to meet pastor augie but i can see the uh, uh, impact that he's made on our church here and what he continues to do and may we continue to run the race in a way to win and keep our eyes on the prize and the prize being jesus Amen. I want to remind you all that we have a men's discipleship taking place next Saturday. So for all the men out there, please head out to that. We also have a couple things going on in May. Our Diversity Sunday is taking place. So you've got some time to uh, whip out all the old recipe books and show off what your country does or uh, your heritage, all of that. You can see Sister Debbie if you want to get in on that. With that being said, I'm going to say a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for what you continue to do within our church and our ministry. Uh, I pray that each one of us can fix our eyes on you, that as we go about our daily lives, even though it gets tough, that we can always rely on you and hope for the best because we know that you are here for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
we will break them now. Every knee shall bow, every tongue proclaim, giving glory to his holy name. He is the Lord over everything. Let all creation proclaim. Let creation sing, let the people shout. For his goodness and his mercy we will pray them now. Every knee shall bow, every tongue proclaim, giving glory to his holy name. He is the Lord over everything. Let all creation proclaim. He's almighty, almighty, incredible, incredible, amazing, amazing, supernatural, natural. Everything. 